Hey guys, in this video we're going to go over how Nexa plays short B on Mirage, so let's get started. So here, normally at the start of the round, Nexa, he'll just go towards this get right area and have a piece of utility out as his upper B player will throw the initial utility to stop the B rush. Here we see another example of it where he has a Molotov out, then his upper B player is going to throw a smoke initially, and then he's going to take contact to upper B. So the whole idea is, is that as soon as the T's make some kind of presence or show that they're going to be rushing towards B, he's going to throw his utility. So we'll see an example of this here in this round where the T's, they've thrown a smoke as well as a few flashes. So next up he's going to dump his utility towards the entrance. Notice how here he'll peek towards this window and then as soon as the smoke comes out he decides not to peek it as this is sometimes a way for the T's to basically one way the smoke. So he's going to take a safe for a peek where he's just going to be watching towards the balcony as well as anybody who drops out and goes in this direction. Here in this round we're going to see once again he's going to be playing towards get right. Those a piece of utility do quite a bit of damage. And from the spot, notice how you can actually see the shadow of the T's as they start jumping out. So when he gets his kill, another thing to keep in mind is that when the T's jump out, they have to pick either Jail to spot first or whether to pick Get Right to spot first. It's a 50-50 chance, so that's why playing Get Right is a good spot. That's they have to deal with these two angles. So here we're going to see an example where he's going to be supporting a player upper B as he has an op, so he's going to throw the initial utility for him and then have his second piece of utility ready just in case he meets a bit of pressure. So here we see another example of this. The cheese are going to be rushing them though, so he's going to drop his second piece of utility to do a little bit of damage on Nico as he comes out. And notice here the angle that he takes, so notice how he's not necessarily peeking this window here. He doesn't want to expose himself just yet. But notice how when the T's drop out, he can actually see their shadow as they drop out. So he has a pretty good idea of where they are and how to peek them. So here you can see that he takes down Rain and he also takes down Nico on the site before going down to Olaf Meister. So that's something to keep in mind that by them dropping out here, you can actually see the shadow if you're playing from the site area. So here in this round, we're going to see him uh, go towards this catwalk area towards bricks. So one thing to keep in mind is that if you have a good spawn, you want to get towards his left wall as soon as possible. As here, we're going to see him surprise Lucky by taking him down. If you see this from Lucky's point of view, notice how when he's coming out, he doesn't really clear the right side very well. And this is typical because normally at 140 on the clock, as a T, if you're rushing, you're normally expecting this player to be more towards the bricks. You don't expect him to cross towards the right side right away. So that's why uh, by going towards this right side right away, you can catch off the first player who goes towards the catwalk. Here in this round, we're going to see him uh, flash towards top middle. And the T's will normally sometimes throw this default smoke towards catwalk. This is very typical. But notice what Nexa does here. Essentially, he'll peek along this right side here. So one thing to keep in mind is that when the T's throw the smoke, sometimes they'll go along uh, behind the catwalk smoke to jump up on top of the sign right about here. And sometimes they'll also cross over towards this side and try to cross the smoke in this direction here. So that's why Nexa, he's watching uh, this particular angle here. In this round, the T's are going to throw that default cat smoke. And this is another counter to basically have your A player throw flashes for both the connector player and the cat player. So here we're going to see Jax throw the flashes as Nexa and the connector player peek towards top mid. So this is the particular timing that you should throw your utility at underpass is roughly around 140. So here we're going to see him throw that nade and does a bunch of damage to Maka. Here's another example, roughly around 140, he's going to drop a Molotov as well as a nade. And this is a timing where basically if the T decides to run all the way from T spawn all the way towards the entrance of underpass is roughly how long it'll take. So here, this is another way to help your connector player to simply just throw a smoke at the bottom of connector so that their connector player can either save his smoke or maybe he wants to do a different setup with his teammate in sight. So this is an angle that we see Nexa use a lot. It's a bricks off angle. And the reason why this angle is so powerful is because uh, when the T's kind of come in, if they decide to clear out ladder room from a wider angle, he's actually going to be able to see their shoulder as they put their backs against the wall. As well, if they decide that they want to go towards B, the first place that these T's are normally going to be expecting to contact a player is normally towards get right or upper B. They're not going to be expecting that Nexa is going to be playing this particular angle like this so, so closely to them. So here in this round, we're going to see Nexa play towards this ladder room area. And the one thing to keep in mind when you're playing towards the ladder room is that essentially you're taking over middle. So you see that Kenny S, after uh, he leaves towards the connector, he's basically just watching towards A. So as this ladder room player, you have to kind of manage both short as well as mid window. So here we're going to see him peek window and then swing back to peak short and then he'll go back to peak window so the whole idea is that you have to uh, kind of manage both angles at the same time and try to get as much information as you can for your for your team so here in this round we're going to see that uh, he's able to get this kill on window and then swings back immediately waiting for that short trade and then he'll go back towards window to try to get some information to fight more angles 
And another thing to keep in mind is that as soon as you get a kill in the ladder room area, it may be helpful sometimes to get your upper B player to come towards bricks, as typically the T's, they're going to try to trade you from this uh, short area. So getting your upper B player also involved here to basically cover you. So here we're going to see an example of Nexa rotating from ladder room towards B. So here notice how the way he crosses. So when he crosses over, he doesn't stay at this angle for too long. He wants to cross towards this right wall right away to only expose himself towards balcony. And then when he crosses over back, he'll peek only towards the window using the pillar to cover the balcony area. So now he's only focusing on the window. Then when he moves closer to the site, he uses the pillar to cover the window to now only spot towards this van uh, balcony area. So this is another thing that you can do towards this catwalk area. So notice here, uh, next that he's going to do a bit of a boost with Hunter. And if you look at this from Hunter's point of view, notice how he doesn't actually jump on top of this box. He'll only simply stand on top of his head. And this is a really good angle to fight anybody who crosses early towards chair or anybody who crosses early towards catwalk. For Nexa who's on the bottom, notice how he'll just have a Molotov out for his upper B player just in case he gets overwhelmed. Here we're going to see Hunter jump on top of the bricks and this is a great way to get a deeper angle on the player's cat. So if you establish that they're not peeking towards chair and they're not peeking towards early catwalk, this is another way to get a deep angle on middle just in case somebody's crossing towards connector before falling into ladder room. When Hunter's inside that ladder room area, Nexa will simply just act as a normal cat player. So here, they have a bit of a bait setup, but Nexa will still act as if he's just playing catwalk alone. So he's going to take contact with Lucky here, and then he's also going to take contact with Maka as well, take, bring them both down to about 50. And if you see this from Hunter's point of view, he's not going to peek at all. He's not even going to peek after contact is made, he's going to wait a couple more seconds before peeking out to take down these players. The reason why Hunter waits a couple seconds before fighting is because he's actually taking advantage of a specific timing. So if we look at Maka's point of view here, as soon as he takes down Nexa, the fact that he doesn't get shot here in the next half second suggests to him that the CTs are just playing a default setup where it's going to be one cat, one upper B, two towards A, and one player floating between window, connector, and jungle. And because of this, he feels that it's safe, and that's why he even has his back turned as he tries to fall back. And that's the, that's the timing that Hunter is taking advantage of, and that's why he gets these two kills. Here we see a situation where Nexa is rotating towards mid during an A hit. And the thing to keep in mind is that during an A hit, it's very typical that there's going to be a player who's lurking towards top mid, as well as somebody who could be lurking towards underpass. So notice here that Nexa, he's taking it very slowly. He's making sure that he's walking, not making his presence known. Another thing to keep in mind is that you should also look at how much your teammates are actually holding the A site. So here they're actually winning a lot of the fights. So he knows that this player who could be lurking in this area, he'll have to make the first move. So that's why he's being very cautious here. Here we're going to see him get flashed off from the bricks angle and notice how as he rotates away from the bricks he's just walking the whole time even when he gets towards this market area he's just simply walking the same with Kenny S as they're both about to cross each other and the whole reason why you want to walk in this area is to not give away information for the T's who are at middle as if you run you're going to give away this information that you're rotating and if you give away that information that you're rotating it may prompt the upper B player to try to take this 1v1 fight against the solo B player so you don't want to give them that window of opportunity by letting them know when you rotate you want to be very quiet about it so playing get right is the best spot to play in in a way where you can uh, support your upper B player as well as watch catwalk at the same time so here we're going to see that Nexa he's close enough to be able to throw a smoke but as well close enough to be able to spot towards bricks so playing Van is probably the most preferred spot whenever the T's are on a bit of a save as this is a long range angle towards Bricks. So it allows him to also jump spot here from upper B and basically he's pulling all the attention from both upper B and catwalk and what this allows is that his second B player can simply just hide in a corner somewhere and shoot people on the side. So here Nexa after he makes contact he basically takes his fights towards catwalk and then his second upper B player will just simply take care of upper B and then here he'll just simply focus more towards the site and catwalk area. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys liked what you saw, please like, subscribe, hit the notification bell for more future content. Thanks again. I'll see you guys in the next one.